Hi everyone, welcome to The Witching Week. Today is episode number 64. Today we are talking about upcoming In Bulk, which is happening this week. We are talking about Ravens. We are talking about some of the things that I've been watching on Netflix. And I have some announcements to make. So as per usual, grab a cup of tea, put your incense on, get comfy, and we'll delve into The Witching Week. So welcome back everybody, thank you for watching, thank you for being here, welcome. My name is Ren and I'm known as the Cemetery Witch. If you're new to the channel and you're new to the Witching Week, we get together every single Friday for a cup of tea and a bit of a chinwag and a bit of a natter. We talk about the wheel of the year and the seasonal changes. We talk about things that catch my eye or of interest, recommendations, sometimes many reviews. Uh, we just talk about general witchy and pagan stuff really and some of it not witchy and pagan so yeah welcome back everybody it has been a very 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 busy week and a bit of a stressful week as well um, I've just got off the telephone to Dell computers I ordered a laptop it didn't get delivered there was some sort of issue between Dell and the delivery company the delivery company I think and now as a customer I'm having to correct that they can't just give them the correct address and re-deliver it I've got to go and pick it up or cancel the order and start again so it's a complete mess I spent 40 minutes on the phone to them this morning and I'm no further forward and I need my laptop for my new job next week so I'm not going to get it in time so it's been a bit of a stressful morning and I'll tell you as well a bit later about everything that has just been breaking and going wrong it's been quite a stressful week so I'm coming back down to earth massively behind schedule today I'd usually have this done and edited and up so if it's a little bit late I'm sorry I've planned a bumper episode this week and it will seem like I'm late because I'm starting a new job and it's not it's thanks to Dell computers so yeah what a day so I am burning some patchouli forest incense just to try and bring me back down to earth I love this one so much as you know and really this is the one that I like burning the most and I am drinking peach tea and not only am I drinking peach tea but I am drinking peach tea from my very own mug yes we have the cemetery witch mugs they are going to be available soon along with a load of other merchandise and designs so what's better in the morning when you're having your morning coffee or your cup of tea or your hot chocolate perhaps while you're sat by the fire or you're doing a crossword or something but you're having your morning tea and you're you've stirred in some some intentions for the day and you've made your intentions what sort of a day it's going to be what could be better a cemetery witch mug so yeah I will give you details on when they're going to be available let me just show you t-shirt as well this is an extra large apparently this is a 12 to 14 now it does fit me but I think it does seem a bit big it's massive but anyway I can see what the print quality is like and it's really really nice so yeah we've got all sorts coming up we've got iPhone cases and iPad covers and artwork and all sorts and there's quite a few other designs that I've created as well so I will keep you in the know as soon as you can get your hands on the merchandise I will let you know so that is very very exciting so what have we been doing this week well my hubby and I we managed to get down to Avebury last weekend we got up early we set off we thought we'd have a day to just like reconnect in with each other enjoy the shops walk around the stones we did do all that however if you're thinking of going down at the moment they have closed the banks that go around a3 in particular i'm thinking of the main part opposite the pub they have closed the banks due to erosion and actually it runs um there's a there's like a country road opposite the pub well to the left and it runs quite a long way down and they've closed it even off all around there as well so they want the grass to recover i guess ready for the spring the summer we were there this time last year and i don't remember 
anything being closed off. I have seen things, I have seen part of the bank being cordoned off before, but never to this extent. I guess that it's just getting more and more visitors each year, isn't it? It's become very, very popular now. I have to say it was the quietest I'd ever seen though. Um, I have heard on the grapevine there have been cases of Alabama rot, which is a condition, a renal condition that affects dogs. So if you are thinking of going at the moment and you are thinking of taking your dog, be careful. But all things considered, I would probably leave it until a little bit later in the in the season. I mean, we had a lovely day. We went around the shops. I mean, there's what is there? There's two or three shops, isn't there? We had a lovely morning. We did bring our lunch booking forwards because we did the shops. We had a look at the stones. We had a little mooch, but a lot of it and a lot of it that we wanted to get to was cordoned off. So it might be worth just leaving it a couple of months, uh, especially if money is an issue and just go down when things are a bit better down there. But yeah, Alabama Rock, one to look out for and be careful of. And also the banks are closed. And it was just still really windy and cold. Not that it's never windy and cold there. I mean, when we, we got hand fast there on the 1st of May in 2016, and it was as cold on that Beltane day as it was on Saturday. So that just tells you what it's like, what it's like down in that part of the country. But yeah, we, we did go in the church. <coughs> Excuse me, we went into the big church. We've never actually been inside it before. I don't think I have in the past either, no. And um, they had a lovely display in there. They had this gorgeous tree with lots of little hearts on. And there was one that said, Jacob, age three. And his wish was, please may everyone be happy. I thought that was really, really lovely. I thought that was really quite heartwarming. So yeah, it was a lovely morning nonetheless. And even just going down for the morning, that still took up our entire day because it's such a long way down and we left at like six, half six. So that tells you what a long way from home Avebury is for us, but we had a lovely day nonetheless. What else has been happening this week? Oh, I got my gadget from the NHS. So those of you that have been following the channel for a while know that I've been really, really poorly. I've been complaining of heart issues and I've worn various monitors. Um, and now, uh, well, I have been put on the list for a special gadget so that I could take proper ECGs absolutely anywhere. You know what it's like, you go to the hospital, you sit and wait for an hour, they do your ECG and they say, you're absolutely fine. And I always think, well, of course I'm fine. I've been like sat in a chair for an hour. So my cardiologist, well, firstly, the guy in A&E, the nurse practitioner whose wife has the same conditions as me. Thank you for listening to me, even though you didn't find anything on that day. And um, thank you to my cardiologist who has listened. Um, big thumbs down <laughs> to my doctor surgery, who just in coma hypochondriac. And despite the very spicy family history, we're just kind of going through the motions reluctantly and never made the referral. And it's just as well that the hospital did because this amazing little gadget has found some issues. I knew there was, I knew there were. So this is smaller than a credit card. As you can see, I mean, it's about the, the width of my palm and really, really thin. God, I don't want to drop it in my tea. Or I'd have to replace it and that would be expensive. But yeah, basically I set this next to my mobile phone. I press a button and I can start recording my ECG and I just put my two fingers on here and it tells you what the issue is. So very, very clever. And this thing is going to change my life this year. Hopefully, fingers crossed. So I can't wait to get sorted. So thank you everybody for all your love and support and patience. Thank you also to those of you who joined in the Ancient Earth giveaway on Instagram. It's turned into the biggest giveaway I've ever done. There's something ridiculous on there, like 700 comments. And I'd say probably only a hundred of those are mine. The rest are just like hearts by me. Um, absolutely massive. Thank you so much. I will be announcing the winner on Instagram on Sunday night. So there's still time to get over there. 
Um, even if you don't have an account, you could start one and you just need to be able to tag some people in it. But yeah, thank you. And if you've not entered already, go for it. It's a gorgeous dress. And even if you don't think that you would wear it, maybe you could win it for a friend or a loved one. So yeah, I'm starting with them this week. If you don't know who Ancient Earth Clothing are, then go and have a look at last week's episode. I'll tell you all about them. Absolutely fantastic alternative clothing company, kind of witchy, kind of boho. Very, very exciting and lovely sort of ethics and values, really nice people. So yeah, I'm really excited about that. Probably a weird time to start a job, but the opportunity was just too good to give up. So it's been a very, very positive year and um, some very exciting things happening what with job and my heart gadget and all of that. But it's also been like almost like it's been mercury retrograde in that everything has been breaking and just suddenly like not working as well anymore and just miscommunications and issues like my Dell computer is a really good example of something that should just run smoothly but doesn't. And so I wondered if this was reflected in your lives. Is this just something I'm going through? I'm just going through like a massive personal life overhaul. And so all my technology is like breaking. So I have to get new stuff ready for this fresh start. Is this the same for you guys? Has it been very, very good, but kind of a bit stressful and everything's kind of been breaking and like new beginnings, forcing new beginnings. Has it been like that for you? I would love to hear. In the last week, um, I haven't got my new tire yet, but I've got puncture, so I need a new tire. Um, so I've had to put the money aside for that. I have needed a new laptop, an iPad, the charging port has given up. I have needed to get a stand and a ring light and a microphone ready for my new job and um, my printer is broken, it's completely dead now, doesn't interact whatsoever so I've needed to get a new printer. Just everything has just made it a really, really challenging couple of weeks but I've had these really good things in the background that have just kind of like kept me going. Are you, uh, is your life following the same route? What is it all about? Tell me about how your year is going now that we're a month in and also how your week is going. So I've got one other announcement as well to make, which is very, very exciting. I have been writing some witchcraft courses, as you know. I've decided to shelve one of them for a little bit, my witchcraft for beginners course. I'm just gonna add some bits to that. I just wasn't quite happy with it but I have finished my protection magic course. And when I say finish, like it's totally all done now. I know for quite a while I've been saying I finished it, I finished it, but there are always edits, there are always tweaks, there are always things that you just, in the, in the course of like doing it, you work out, oh, that doesn't work, I'm gonna need to change that. But we finally got to the point where I will be able to offer this to you. So this will be coming as well at some point in the next few weeks or the next month. I don't know a date exactly yet. I'm still working on certain elements of it as well. Like um, I've listed it as a digital download so that you can either just like use your computer or tablet at home or you can print it off but I'm also going to offer it as like a paper materials version and then you know I need to work out things like postage so it's still in the workings but it is finished now 328 pages purely on protection magic so this is like my 26 years of experience it's research it's things that I've tried it's magical correspondences that I like to use 328 pages, nine modules. So each module has um, a theme and then at the end of it, it has reflection exercises, suggested reading activities. You don't have to do those to be able to complete the course. All you have to do is study the material. There are 33 spells, rituals, remedies, recipes, that kind of thing. 18, about 18 of them are exclusive and will not appear in any other course or online or anywhere else. So they will be exclusive to this course. There are over 3,240 magical correspondences. So really, really helpful, comprehensive, 
course that yeah I'm going to be offering as a digital download or a paper copy and then I would also like to offer it in person from my workroom here that does depend on my heart because it is actually some days difficult to talk at length um, you might hear me taking like quite big breaths. Um, I might be able to do that with a group of people that I know that are relaxed with me, that understand that, that are going to be chatting and filling the gaps. Because when you do a course, it takes a little while for everyone to open up a little bit. But eventually, you know, I'm going to be able to offer that hopefully in person to all. So really, really exciting. And I have to say, I give myself a pat on the back. I'm actually really, really proud. This is many, many hours of work of, and I'm not the most natural writer I can do it I can get it done but it probably takes me a bit longer than others so I've done it so yeah so that is very very exciting and that the, the merchandise and the course are not the only announcements there are more things coming and then obviously I'm going to have to announce when everything is going to be available but I'm just I'm I'm working flat out at the moment when I can to get this to you. So watch this space, but very, very exciting. Maybe next Friday for more announcements. I don't know yet. We'll see how this week goes. We'll see if it continues to be a bit of a Mercury retrograde day, but I'm thinking that there might be more announcements next week. And then I think that things will hot up sometime in February, maybe beginning of March. So not long now. It could come before, but we'll see, we'll see. So what else have I been doing? So apart from various sneaky secret little bits in the background, I have been watching a program called I Am A Stalker, which is on Netflix. So obviously quite a dark topic. For me, I really, really enjoy psychology, people, how people behave, what motivates them, why they do what they do, mental illness, stuff like that. Um, I have had two sort of experiences myself. Thankfully, neither of them have got too serious. So I had an ex-boyfriend who just, even though he was a complete shitbag, and I then dumped him, he gave me some trouble for quite a long time. And in the end, I had to threaten him with the police, which I really didn't want to do. And he hung around and did really weird things for several years after I broke up with him and I had a new partner and he just wouldn't leave it alone. And then another time um, has been with someone on Instagram. So that has been really, really difficult. And it's interesting because you do, you sort of see all these patterns of behaviour both in both cases with um, my experiences, but also when you watch this programme. And it's really, really difficult because I know I have a public account and to some degree, if you like, I mean, I wouldn't use this myself, but you could say I'm a public persona, but I'm not public property. And so it gets really, really difficult because sometimes people have really, really intense feelings. And this is what happened with this person. And they wouldn't leave me alone. And then they would open a new account and they wouldn't even change their name, really. And they would leave comments on my page as if say, hi, like nothing had happened, like I hadn't blocked them. And I was getting really, really uncomfortable and I made it clear to them. I don't want to have a relationship with you and it had been very intense for them they decided that we had this deep connection this was like after just like talking just like maybe two or three times they decided we were like soul sisters and we had this deep connection and all I'd done was offer some sort of like technical support in in terms of Instagram as a page and how it works and they were going to come and find me they put they were going to come to England and find me and on the occasion that I'd like tagged friends and cousins and things like that, instead of just like having a nose and being interested, they would latch on to those people as well and start following them. And there would be no real, you know, they followed me because I was a witchcraft page and there'd be no real reason to follow these other people, but they would. But there was like an intensity to it and very, very strong emotions. And they started to get jealous if I posted a picture with like, people there was there was a reason why I posted a picture with like other people I didn't know and they were in a in a ring and it was an open right and that was okay and the kind of the thing that people connected to this particular group would do so that was okay but she would get very very jealous of these people and I'd be like but I don't know all of them well in the end she despite being blocked several times 
managed to find a friend of mine who sells pictures of me from reference modeling I'd done. And she ordered a painting of me for her home and kind of had a bit of a go at him because he was my friend and she wasn't. And so it's really, I've, I, I sort of look out for those signs very, very quickly and look out for those intense feelings that, you know, a small percentage of the population seem to develop and it's really, really difficult because I'm not public property and absolutely no one has to interact with another person in a way that they're not comfortable with if they don't want to. And it's totally OK to set a boundary with someone and say, no, I don't want this and to block them. And when you've got 37,000 followers, you do end up sometimes finding or these people find you and they develop really, really intense feelings. And I'd really love to chat you know, every day. And some people want to do that, but it's really, really difficult because, you know, when you think there are 37,000 people, sometimes there's quite a few people and I try my very, very best, but I'm also a person with feelings and family. And when someone latches on like that, and then the next thing you know, they've got hold of your home address, it's, it's really quite scary. And when I think of this person, and I think that they've got a picture of me hanging in their home, despite the fact that I've said, no, I don't want anything to do with you. I think that's quite, it's quite mixed, mixed up and muddled sort of thinking, isn't it? It's, um, yeah, it's quite scary. And you get to see this play out in this programme, how people develop these really, really intense feelings towards someone. And it's very, very cleverly done this this program and I don't want to spoil it for you I will say that you when you first start to watch the first episode yeah, I think you see the stalker talk first anyway the stalker and the victim they talk very very early on both of them and you hear each side of the story and you realize that there's some really really serious trauma there and so you start to sort of sympathize with the stalker but then things aren't quite what they seem and it's a bit of a theme throughout the program that you sort of you know you empathize with some of them and then you hear what they've actually done and it's it's quite shocking putting the two together um, very good. It's not voyeuristic at all. You do get to hear both sides, which is really, really nice. And you do get to see that it has the impact that the stalking has on the victim's life. And for many people, this is an issue for many, many years. And it's really quite sad in places as well. There's one guy who's out of prison. He is behaving himself. But he really, really hopes that he'll have his family back together again. And his X has made it very, very clear to him that it's it's over, it's done. So you do get an insight into the psychology of these poor people because I think to some degree they're they're victims as well. I'm not convinced that all of them are truly aware of their behaviour and their actions. Um, I'm just lighting some more incense because. I already started to sort of record this episode and I was just still really wound up about my conversation with Dale because it was just so crazy that um, one company couldn't pass on like address details to the other after their mistake. So it's taken me quite a while to uh, come back down to earth. So let me just light this. So yeah, it's quite an unsettling program. Um, you don't feel empathy, I don't think, with all of the stalkers. Uh, there's definitely one character on there. It'll be interesting to see if you agree, but there's one who, from the minute they showed him, I was just like instantly terrified. He was just quite a terrifying person and it was clear that there's some sort of issues going on there. And I mean that kindly as well. Like I suspect there's some serious mental health problems that drive some of these behaviours. And um, some of them I think were just bad. Um, but yeah, very, very interesting. Have you seen this programme? And if so, what did you think? Did you enjoy it? Again, it's not voyeuristic, it's more um, sort of, informing you of, of the size of the problem. 1.4 million people in the US are stalked every single year. I don't know what the figure is for the UK. I haven't looked that up. I just heard that fact on the programme itself. Um, yeah, very, very interesting subject, a very intense subject. I thought we would talk about ravens next. I saw this lovely image in the week which says that ravens are affectionate and they mate for life and they live for over 40 years so they'll be with their partner for that amount of time 
and I thought it was really, really lovely, but I thought I would do some research myself just to see whether this in fact is true. And it is. So apparently they live for over 40 years. So some at the uh, Tower of London that are over 40 years old. They are the most widely distributed of all the Corvids. They do display devotion to their families, but apparently they are very, very quarrelsome. So I thought this was kind of cute that they're, you know, they have this quarrelsome part to them that perhaps the other birds don't have and that they really, really love each other, but they, they argue a lot. I thought that was lovely. They, tra they travel in mated pairs, apparently. So they will start courting when they're very, very young. And it might take them two or three years to find another bird that they will then form a bond with. And then usually they will stay in that location and they will pair for life. So they will couple up and that's it. They're in a long term relationship, which I thought was really, really lovely. I thought about some of the things that they symbolise. Maybe you have an idea in your head. Let me know in the comments what you think. For me, they kind of represent magic and mystery and I do have like ideas in my head of what I think about them and I don't know how much of that is formed by other people so for example they're often associated aren't they with like a trickster character which I think is probably because they're really intelligent but and I do think of that when I think of them but is that because I've just picked up that association from somewhere else I don't know they are associated with fearlessness, with adaptability, with creation. Uh, some people associate them with death and bad fortune. And I guess when you think of the Tower of London, that kind of ties in with that. But then other people apparently associate them with like rebirth and renewal and starting things afresh, starting anew. Um, with insight, because I guess because they are intelligent intelligence, I would associate that with them definitely. And I suppose to some extent, love and devotion, because they are very much family creatures. They have a partner. Apparently young birds will create flocks, which is interesting because we had two pairs here and then they kind of like joined together. And then at some point there was a fifth bird. So I don't know if that was just a young random bird that joined them or whether that was a baby because it was quite small so we think that one of the pairs had a baby uh, maybe the other two aren't a pair and they had just started to form a flock I don't know but we've got five on the cemetery currently and it's really interesting because I'll see them out outside the house but then I'll see them just like just down the road a bit and yeah they fly about the five of them together doing stuff and then sometimes I sort of like go their distance a little bit but they're still in a rough sort of area together so it's quite interesting watching their behaviour. They appear a lot in Celtic lore so prophecy, fertility, war and they also represent like oracles or teachers. They are also associated with deities so if we think of the Morrigan Morrigan is a warrior goddess and also they are related to the Greek god Apollo who's related to war again and in that connection they appear as a symbol of prophecy so yeah very very interesting birds I love looking up things like this um, I really really like animal medicine magic whatever you would like to call it but I have to say, I don't very often get the time to actually sit down and have a read and have a think about it all. So it's quite nice for me doing the Witching Week because it means that I get an opportunity to do that. So we've got Imbolg coming up, haven't we, this week? Um, it's landing on, I think it's on the Thursday. Yeah, I think Friday's second, isn't it? So how many of you are going to be celebrating? Have you got plans? Have you got things organised and all set up, ready? I am really, really unorganised this year, which probably isn't a surprise as I've been working on some projects in the background and I'm about to start a new job. I will get out for a walk at some point. I will get some fresh air. I will probably do a nice meal. Um, but other than that, I feel like I feel like it's kind of almost arrived. We've had some very, very blue skies and sunshine, which for me, 
usually doesn't appear in this part of January. Usually it's sort of like well into February, at least last year anyway, I seem to think that the blue skies didn't really start until well after in bulk. So yeah, I, I feel like we're already there. I feel like this winter has been much easier to navigate. And I know that's because we've had some unseasonably warm weather, which is not good. But for me personally, it's been a bit of a relief and I feel like we've got away with a lot this year and I just, with my heart the way it is, I just couldn't have done another cold winter like last year. And because my husband had a new job as well, that paid really well. It meant we've been able to have the heating on. So it's been much more doable, much more manageable. And we've, we've nearly done it, guys. We are nearly there. We are nearly at spring not long now we have got one week until in bulk well just under we've got eight weeks until the spring equinox and we've got 14 weeks believe it or not till beltane so in bulk is like the midpoint between yule and astara so well the spring equinox so obviously at the spring equinox that's a point of balance where day and night are the same length and then after that the balance is going to be tipped in favour of more light than darkness. So I love the fact that Beltane feels so close because if we think of the Sabbaths being six to eight weeks away each time you get to one, generally about six weeks, you think, well, there's only six weeks then really until, well, seven, until the spring equinox and then Beltane comes after that. So it feels like Beltane's really, really close but not so close that it's gonna be gone in the blink of an eye. And then before you know it, we've got to lift her. My computer has turned up at least. Absolute nightmare. What a funny old week, but at least it's done now so we can celebrate. Hooray. <laughs> this is the second filming of this as well. And I, I was like, you haven't got any parcels coming, have you? Like, I really wanna film this without any interruptions. He's like, no, I haven't got any parcels, so no, but then me, and then it's just all coming apart the scenes. But anyway, this is life, isn't it? So before I do some cards, I just wanted to show you my Morgan Greer deck. So in the shop at Avery, I saw these cards and I had, I'd got rid of a load of my cards. I, I think I sold some, I gave some away and I gave a load to the charity shop and I said I wouldn't get any more decks because I was just sort of swamped, but there's something about these ones that are really, really cool to me that I really, really like. So they're absolutely gorgeous. They're so bright and they're kind of like almost a bit 70s, I think. Yeah, I really like them. So I haven't started working with them yet. I am going to cleanse those and consecrate them and do everything that I need to do with those. But I'm gonna use my Rider weight deck for the time being. But yeah, I thought they were lovely. So let's do some cards for the week ahead. Let's take a little look at the energy, what might come up for you and how you might respond. Okay, so we have four cards here today. They all jumped out at me and we have death. We have the 10 of pentacles. We have judgment and we have the King of Swords. So very much um, sort of looking at endings here and things culminating. So the Death card, we associate with the end of something, like out with the old, in with the new, the end of one phase leading into the start of something else. And it doesn't carry the shock and the destruction and the absolute sort of surprise of the tower, which, you know, I think of as meaning like total catastrophe, usually the death card, whilst there might be a little bit of pain associated with it, um, even things that we're finishing up or cycles that come to an end that we know are gonna to come to an end, sometimes there's a little bit of pain with it, but this is all about things ending for your higher good. This is about things getting better, not worse. And so, it may well be that there is an ending for you 
this week, you know, something is coming to a close. And again, and you might know, you might not know that's gonna happen. And again, number 10 is very much a number of culmination. It's the end of a cycle. It's the end of something we've been doing and then getting ready for a fresh new cycle. So culmination achievement. So perhaps there is something that you've been working really, really hard on that is about to end and you're ready to take it to another stage. Maybe, uh, you know, a lifestyle or a situation you've been in is about to end and you're about to start something new and exciting. And we have the judgment card. So often with these big moments in life, we have big decisions to make as well. So maybe that might be a part of your week that as we, you come to the close with something that there are gonna be big life-changing decisions to make as a result of that process. And the advice would be to use your head, use your intelligence, use your logical processes, use what you've got up here. Now, of course, always use what you've got in here, but I think that when the swords come up, they are a reminder to just do things sort of methodically in a clever way you know yes always listen to your heart but maybe the message here is to just stop take stock don't rush it don't be emotional just consider that consider emotions consider heart but also weigh it up against you know fact and intelligence and just being a little bit savvy so yeah very very nice cards we haven't seen any of these really have we i don't think judgment has ever come up or if it has it's only been like once or twice um i don't think we've had the ten of pentacles either and i can't recall death coming out for quite a long time either so lovely message for the week ahead if you've got this far, thank you. Um, if you haven't subscribed and you got this far, please subscribe to the channel. Can't even say the word. It only takes a couple of seconds. It doesn't cost you anything and it really helps me to grow. It will help hopefully show my channel to other people on YouTube who are just like us. So thank you so much for being here and all the interruptions and all the stress. Hopefully that's it now. I now don't have to deal with the people at Dell any longer because the options they were giving me were just absolutely ridiculous so I can tell them that the laptop has arrived and oh my god what a whole load of craziness so have an absolutely wonderful week I look forward to being here next week and letting you know how my first week at Ancient Earth went and I look forward to reading the comments and finding out what you've all been up to and yeah have a really really wonderful witching week